Mr. Speaker, investment is leaving Canada under this Prime Minister. Scotiabank says, quote, reliance on the existing pipeline network and rail shipments to bring Canadian oil to market has demonstrable impact on Canada's well-being, with consequences mm -hmm. that extend well beyond Alberta. The BMO warns the pipeline crisis sends a message it's difficult to develop Canadian resources and will limit, quote, revenues, taxes, investment, production and development. Why is this Prime Minister chasing billions in investment, jobs and Indigenous opportunities from Canada? Canada into the United States. Here, here. Uh, the Minister of Natural Resources. Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, the Prime Minister was in Fort McMurray, so was the Minister of Infrastructure, and we listened to uh, the workers of Fort McMurray, and you know, they actually came from every nook and cranny of the country, Mr. Speaker, working in the oil sands, and they understand better than everybody else how important the energy sector is for families in virtually every region of the country. And the member knows that we approved the Trans Mountain Expansion Pipeline for all of the reasons that she would agree with. Jobs, expansion of export markets, investor certainty. The Honourable Member for Lakeland. Well, Mr. Speaker, the BC Business Council says the TMX delay is, quote, a crisis of confidence right. in Canada's regulatory yeah. processes with far-reaching implications. Canada has always had the world's highest standards yeah. for energy and environmental yeah. regulation, but this Prime Minister has killed over 6,600 kilometres of pipeline and driven over $80 billion in energy investment out of Canada in less than one term. RBC warns capital is fleeing Canada in real time and quote, if we don't keep the capital here, we can't keep the people here. Yeah. When will this Prime Minister finally champion Canadian energy? Uh, how about pretty well every day, Mr. Speaker? Right now. And, uh, it's, it's remarkable what the members opposite don't want to hear. Uh, they don't want to listen to what we say when we talk about the Ocean Protection Plan. They don't want to listen to us when we talk about working with Indigenous communities. They don't want to listen to us when we talk about the pipelines that we have approved. So it's very selective hearing and revisionist history. The Honourable Member for Oshawa. Mr. Speaker, but the Prime Minister hasn't done that. He repeated yeah. in Paris that he wants to phase out the energy right. sector. Right. Canadian pipelines are built with Canadian steel. The Ontario steel industry supplies some of the best quality green steel available. Unfortunately, this Prime Minister committed over and over again to shutting down our energy sector. We've lost more than $80 billion due to his failed policies. Mr. Speaker, no Canadian pipe means no Canadian steel, no Canadian jobs. Why is this Prime Minister killing good manufacturing jobs in Canada and in Ontario by phasing out our energy sector? The Minister of Natural Resources. Mr. Speaker, uh, I guess still the member opposite uh, wasn't listening. He wasn't listening to what the Prime Minister has said and what we say every day. He's not listening to the number of pipeline approvals and why. He's not listening to the importance that the natural resource sector continues to play in the Canadian economy. It doesn't matter if they're not listening. We'll continue to repeat that message, Mr. Speaker, every day. Honourable Member for Calgary, Signal Hill. Well, Mr. Speaker, today is the last day of April, exactly one month until Kinder Morgan will make its decision on whether it proceeds with Trans Mountain or not, or whether it ends up in the graveyard of pipeline failures like Northern Gateway and Energy East. At the same time, the Prime Minister, when the Minister of Energy wants to talk about what we're listening to, we're listening to the Prime Minister talk about phasing out the oil sands, and we're watching as they're funding summer student jobs to protest against pipelines, Mr. Speaker. Why doesn't the Minister just admit this is the all part of the Prime Minister's plan to get rid of the energy sector in Canada? Covered a lot of ground in 35 seconds. Uh, very good. Uh, we could talk about uh, the number of dollars that the Conservative Party gave to the very same group they're criticizing us for having funded. Uh, or we could talk about freedom of speech. Maybe their preference is that we should make sure we only fund those groups that agree with every single one of our policies. That's not the way that we operate. And it's also true. It's also true that the members should know that 50,000 new jobs have been created in Alberta. Alberta continues to lead in GDP growth. We are proud. Honourable member for London.